Let me know if you can see um, the slide deck. Yeah, they're coming up. Perfect. Fantastic. Um, so yeah, welcome everybody to today's Bite Size Program Summit. Um, sorry, that's my screen there bobbing up in the background. Um, today we were due to have three facilitators for, for the program update. Unfortunately, my colleague Hannah Thornton from the One Workforce One Model Program is unwell, so it's going to be my good self <laughs> providing the majority of the OBI. I'm going to cover Hannah's slides. And I'm Claire Hines. I'm the Virtual Workforce Information System Program Manager, and I work for the Greater Manchester Health and Social Care Partnership. And I have with me today Alan Slack, the guru of all things BWIS, who is our Virtual Workforce Information System Senior Information Analyst. Um, and this session is, is 45 minutes long and it's meant to be informative, informal and interactive. So please do adjust yourselves, make yourselves comfortable. For any latecomers just joining the call, just again, just a reiteration of housekeeping. The session will be recorded. Microphones muted if you can, um, and cameras on if you do feel comfortable to do so. And we, it is quite an interactive session, so if you could open your chat box now, um, and do feel free to put any questions in the chat box that you may need, want to ask, um, and questions will be placed by a mentee. So we'll go through mentee in a second, um, and also in the chat, so please do participate, and it is meant to be an interactive and informal session. Part of the contents for today and um, the Bite Size Programme Summit, we're going to start off with the workforce of tomorrow and, and really um, looking at and asking ourselves some questions of let's talk about workforce. We're going to be looking at Greater Manchester workforce challenges, the NHS People Plan and how our particular programmes feed into the bigger picture, the One Workforce and One Model Programme, understanding of our GM workforce and we're going to be talking to you a little bit about the virtual in, virtual, I can speak, virtual workforce information system the view is so lots of long words there and questions and feedback at the end but as I say we'll try and keep it quite timely um, as we go through so the workforce of tomorrow we're going to start with a little bit of audience participation um, and if you can open Menti on your web browsers, that would be wonderful. It's just www.menti.com. Um, I'm sure Danielle or Sophie will pop it into the chat box as well. And our code will be 41884564. So um, just three questions that we want to start off in terms of general discussion. And those questions will pop up in Menti because I'm going to share my screen in a second with Sophie. But we want you to really think about what does an integrated workforce look like? What does workforce planning mean to you? And what are your current challenges with workforce supply? So just general sentences, keywords will be absolutely fantastic just for this next section. So um, if you can, dial on to www.menti.com and that would be great. Um, the code is 41884564. Okay, Sophie's just going to be bringing that up on screen. So our first question is, what does an integrated workforce look like? Some good responses popping up there now. It takes a couple of seconds. So one that's working towards skills, sharing and development, cross-sector collaboration, collaborative, working collaboratory, yeah, collab yeah, across all partners, multidisciplinary, working close together, patient benefits, patient-centric, people in the system understanding the system. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I think we'll, we've got a few more popping up. We'll share these as well at the end of the session. Lots of collaboration built in there. Fully flexible, transform, yet yeah, transformational. Meeting the needs of the community. Fantastic. Thank you so much for your contributions there. Evidence based, driven by data. Love that one. <laughs> Integrated. Fantastic. Thank you very much, everyone. I think we'll move on to our second question now, if we can, Sophie. So what does workforce planning mean to you? Now, this could be varying depending on your role. So what does workforce planning mean to you? Oh, sorry, everyone.
this one normally takes a, a little longer to pop up, I think. Future needs, wonderful. Where people need to be, current position, future directional aims, or oh, lots of them popping up now, quality, capacity, proactive, resilient, or oh, fantastic, responsive, right skills, future needs, in the right place, horizon scanning, wonderful, succession planning. Right size of workforce, the right skills. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone, for your contribution there. And I think our third and final question is what are your current challenges with workforce supply? Not enough yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not knowing what to expect yet, yeah, recruitment, resilience, lack of quality candidates in the market, succession planning, recruitment, sickness, attrition, burnout, yet yeah, difficulty in recruiting, staff shortages, retention, high turnover, modern approach to recruitment. Give it a couple more seconds. Here we go. Capacity in the community, social care workers, age profile, attraction, right staff being able to meet community needs. Wonderful. So we can see some themes there across all of the organisations that are on, on this call today in terms of you know, current challenges and workforce supply. Talent management, absolutely. High turnover, not enough workforce. Burnout, <laughs> absolutely. Thanks for that, Sophie. That's that's really, really useful. Right, I want to request control and just um, share my screen back with you now. Okay. So some really interesting questions there for, for the workforce and, in, and indeed in discussion around with our with our stakeholders around the work that we've been doing. What does an integrated workforce look like? And we do have lots of common themes that run through. So care in the community, a workforce aligned with demand and priorities, improved care experiences, multidisciplinary team working, putting care into the community. What does workforce planning mean to you? you know, lots of really great examples that came through on the Menti. But depending on your role, it can mean lots of different things. It could mean fulfilling short, medium, long term goals. Planning for the future, workforce models, and number crunching. So those uh, might be Claire, the slides are gone. Claire, sorry, the slides have dis have disappeared. Oh. Well, it's got green screen. It's gone green. Oh, no. oh no. Can you see them now? Now? Any joy? Or oh, no. the joys of digital. Yeah. I'm going to stop sharing and just come out. <laughs> switch, switch it off and switch it back on again, Claire. That Absolutely, turn it on and off again. <laughs> that's always the uh, that's always the right thing to do. Right window. Should we try again? Oh my goodness! Oh, it's really struggling here with this today. I've done all these run throughs and it always works. Share. I'm going to share on my screen instead. So. Right, sorry everyone. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try this again one more time. No, it doesn't want to work. Alan, I'm gonna leave yeah. and join again. So bear yeah. with me one second. That might be quicker. Or you can send them to one of us if you want, Claire, and we can yeah. do it. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. One yeah, send them over. say we can do it we can try <laughs> we might have the same problem <laughs> second
Sorry, it might help if you just leave the group and. and yeah, I'm trying back. to. Oh, we'll let, oh, that won't let you do that either. Oh, no. no. Sorry, everyone. It won't let me. I don't know if you can just take control and then I can kind of leave. It just won't let me at all. Close the window and see if that helps. Have you tried sending the slides over to, to us? Mm. Yeah, it won't let me leave the event. So, uh, Teams just doesn't seem to be working. I can hear you, but I can't see you. Alan, could you bring the um, the slides up from that link? It won't let me on the link. I've got a PDF of them, I think. Yeah, the PDF should be there. This is when we need the lift music. It is, Martin. <laughs> I think do, 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 do. Yeah, she's by left now. Yeah, she's left. So she rejoins. <laughs> got the, uh, I'll get the backup slides ready just in case. Well. Just messaging her, see where she is. So she can get back out. While we're waiting, I'll just um, do a little fun poll just to keep you occupied. Um, <laughs> if, you're, if you're not doing emails. <laughs> As it is lunchtime. Any uh, inspiration from anybody for later? <laughs> Fastest finger first. <laughs> oh. Oh, I love uh, spud and beans. Should it be showing, Sophie? <clears throat> ah, it's there now. Yes, can you see it? Can everyone see it? <laughs> Making me hungry now. Not had my lunch yet. <laughs> Banana on toast is very exotic, I've got to say, for a, a Thursday <laughs> lunchtime. I would like it with a bit of Nutella spread on the on the top. Banana Nutella. Oh, a bit of honey. Yeah, nice. <laughs> I do butter. like banana on. I do like banana on a butter with peanut butter. Yeah, peanut butter and banana. That's the winner. Peanut butter. <laughs> Peanut buggers with, with anything. <laughs> Lindsay's shaking her head. No, no. I, I had, um, I don't know, I'm going to tell you what I have for breakfast now. I had um, porridge with banana and peanut butter this morning. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. 
I was I was castigated by my family for having a corned beef and peanut butter sandwich the other day. Oh, <laughs> gorgeous! I don't eat meat, so I'm not not a fan of that one. <laughs> I think corned beef's hardly meat, to be honest. No, yeah. <laughs> Have you heard back from Claire, Alan? No. Oh. Um, I don't know if she might be trying to restart a laptop or something, but obviously something's gone on with the Teams because I've messaged her on Teams, I've sent her an email. She's coming back. She back. Hey, I'm back everyone. I do apologise. My laptop had a complete meltdown there. So um, I'll just share my screen. Hopefully we'll be able to see um, the window. Apologies all. Let me know if you can see the screen. Yes. Wonderful. OK, I'm going to do a whistle stop tour now, so I do apologise that I'll try and make up the time as quickly as I possibly can, just in terms of how we're interlinked. So the work that we do in O Woman B is as part of our Greater Manchester Health and Social Care Partnership, our priorities are aligned with the four key pillars of the NHS People Plan. So looking after our people, improving belonging in the NHS, working differently and growing for the future. And the work within the OWAM and VWIS programmes, which I'm going to run through with you today, is focused on integrated workforce planning and development with the aim of understanding the GM workforce and landscape via the delivery of the virtual workforce information system with our data and intelligence and supporting organisations with workforce planning and training via the One Workforce, One Model programme. So Greater Manchester Workforce Planning Challenges. So our programme our programmes are very specific to Greater Manchester and it's really important that we understand the workforce planning challenges in order to address these areas within our work. So these will be these will be themes that you'll be aware of and that will be probably really well known to you with real time data, all sectors of health and social, all sectors of health and care need cross organisational view of talent and a centralised um, capability database. And this will enable people to move between organisations and systems and help people to help the people profession plan to deploy the workforce and meet our patient needs. We've got some real challenges with system level planning, with incomplete data, some data quality challenges, lack of interoperability and a discord between local system and national workforce planning it makes it really difficult to plan services across different parts of the health and care um, infrastructure and some real alignment challenges with long term workforce um, supply predictions education and commissioning and workforce numbers required to meet our health and care demands. This really is where our one workforce, one model comes into, into position. So there are a plethora of drivers for the one workforce, one model programme, including a growing need for GM level reliable workforce intelligence data to help us understand, plan and grow our workforce. And we're aware that there's lots of different understandings across organisations of what workforce planning is. So our aim in OWAM is to build the infrastructure within the ICS people function to support workforce planning at place, to ensure that staff are competent and trained in workforce planning, and to ensure that we have robust and really proactive workforce planning processes that are reviewed annually. Now the workforce model is broken down into four key comp component areas. So I'm going to I'm going to run through them with you today. We've got our lifelong learning model, which is a learning and development framework. The VWI system, which we're going to spend a little bit of time looking at this afternoon. Our workforce transformation development investments, which is funding for localities to develop sustainable and integrated planning solutions and our workforce planning training, which some of you may have already attended in the last couple of months, which is to support the growing and upskilling of the workforce planning practitioners, which includes the online toolkit. So as part of our integrated workforce planning training, we want to grow workforce planners. So last year we've supported over 150 um, individuals across health and social care from all disciplines 
who've signed up for our 01 Workforce Training Days. And, and again, I know that from some of the attendees today, you have attended those sessions, which is wonderful. And as part of this, we have a toolkit that's been developed, um, which includes workforce planning models, the train the trainer model, which includes drop-in sessions to provide extra support for workforce planners. And we have a workforce planners forum, which is available via the Workforce Future Centre. So users can really easily access all the O1 and workforce planning intel, which is helping develop a workforce planning community. So you can scan our QR code and you'll give given access to our workforce future site and you can click on the hyperlink uh, as we'll attach it to part of this presentation for a one-stop shop for all workforce planning tools. Now as part of the workforce planning day we run through best practice um, and best practice standards of workforce planning in the format of a GM workforce planning model so some of you may recognise this if you have been on that training day and it helps it helps with the key steps to workforce planning so from assessment of demand stepping all the way through to looking at workforce design supply and then how do we make it happen so implementation plans and priorities and it's there to support really meaningful change and trans and transformation that's going to be sustainable hopefully for future workforce planning so a planning model help organizations with their workforce planning and as part of um as part of one of the four cohorts we have our workforce transformation investment so we've got we have a number of workforce challenges across greater manchester that are shared by localities and we know that there are themes across greater manchester which are shared not just by organizations but to localities as well so we've allocated funding to several localities across gm and which will encourage those organizations to come together as a system to tackle workforce challenges through strategic and tactical transformation activities and we're really excited about this we, we're looking forward to sharing the workforce transformation case studies with you um, in the future once they are completed as they're currently underway at present and as part of those activities with organisations working together with the funding they're looking at transformation activities so equality diversity training development lifelong learning upskilling and growing your own and um, specifically working together with that locality investment now as part of our gm lifelong learning model the lifelong learning commits to a continuous supportive offer for individuals in order to empower them. So once we have people in roles, how do we keep them there? How do we ensure that they're reaching their maximum potential? Well, we need to invest and ensure that our learning and development offer is available to all. So our ambition as part of the work within the O1 programme is to build a learning and development framework for all health and social care um, users to have access to and we're looking with digital transformation to put this onto a blended virtual learning environment so as part of this work we've conducted a, a deep dive into learning and development office that's currently out there in, in greater manchester the gaps and the opportunities and really looking into what could gm lifelong learning look like longer term so we're pulling together existing infrastructure and there'll be a report and um, a research project report due in April 22. So again, we'd love to share that with you once it's in publication. So across O1, we've got a number of current activities that are currently underway um, and we'll be progressing into 22 and beyond. And this includes a continuation of our workforce planning training days. So we're going to be continuing those activities. They've been oversubscribed um, sessions, which is absolutely wonderful. And it shows us there is a need from organisations to look at having workforce planning in place. Um, we're also going to be continuing the work and supporting the localities with the workforce planning transformation investment. So supporting those localities with the, the bid money and taking the learnings from the activities that they're putting in place. And with our lifelong learning model, we'll be building a learning and development set of solutions for Greater Manchester. So all of the above ensures workforce planning is embedded as part of Greater Manchester ICS people function. And should anybody wish to know more about O1, I'm sure Hannah and myself would love to give you kind of a, a more in-depth presentation on um, O1 activities as they continue into 22 and into 23. 
So this brings us on to workforce analytics. So it's really important to understand the composition and characteristics of the workforce. How, how can you know what you need if you don't want it, if you don't know what it's made up of? And it's important that we also don't just look at organizational level data, but at locality data and, all, and, and data across holistically Greater Manchester. And this is really where our workforce um, BWIS information system comes into play. So the Virtual Workforce Information System is an innovative programme. It uses a bespoke resource created for the Greater Manchester audience. And our system is hosted on Tableau. Um, Tableau is used for other NHS digital solutions and programmes. So you may have already heard of it. You may be a user yourself. And it's a completely free resource and so no cost to any users. And we take data that's already produced by um, local care organisations across Greater Manchester to assist with various kinds of workforce planning and analysis. Now, the utilisation of the VWIS platform allows organisations to have a better understanding of their workforce composition. We take all the hard work out of compiling those analytics and we do it for you. And it does enable those organisational lenses, locality lenses and Greater Manchester lenses. And it enables us to compare demographics across organisations and neighbourhoods. So our programme for VWIS is actually in its third year of maturity. It started as a brand new concept for Greater Manchester in 2019. Um, up to 2019-21, our work was focused on piloting, build, composition, and testing of the system. So with a real focus on onboarding health and social care organisations, local authorities and NHS trusts. And in the last year, we've continued with the onboarding activities um, of which we've got a few examples to show you today. Now, because VWIS is a controlled system, the data can only be accessed by users who've been granted access to the system by their organisation, so it's at their wish. And there can be lots of different types of individuals who need access for data. At the moment in our system, we tend to have workforce analysts, workforce information leads, HRD managers, HR managers, and similar workforce roles across the local authorities and trusts. And your organisation may already be an organisation that's onboarded into VWIS. Now, our programme specialises on data. So information governance is a really key part of what we do information sharing agreements, data protection impact assessments are in place to ensure that the data is shared and controlled and monitored legally. Um, and this, this way that we can adhere to organisational information and govern governance as well across Greater Manchester. So a lot of the data that we use um, or produce is pseudonymized. End users can only really see aggregated data views and we utilise low number suppression throughout the dashboards and throughout the metrics so that we don't breach data security. And VWIS can support organisations by providing lots of amazing visualisations of your workforce, composition, characteristics, and Alan's going to demonstrate those over the next couple of slides, of which are populated within the system. And this information can then be exported, printed, or inserted into documents to help with business cases, specific areas of workforce requirements. You could be looking at very, very specific roles for your organisation, and you can do some really interactive analysis and exploratory data analysis within the system too. It's been built with the end user in mind. You can also look at trends within organisations, and you can also look at gaps and um, areas of concern. So it really does support any user who wants to know more about how the workforce is pulled together. Now, Alan Sack's going to do the next couple of slides and um, really just deep dive into the data sets that we look into. Oh, yeah. So uh, the analytics are split into three main areas, uh, workforce composition, workforce characteristics and absence and turnover. VWIS offers the ability to look at the workforce um, through like selection of lenses and to slice and dice the data in a variety of ways. So the metrics, charts and maps can be filtered by a number of key combinable fields, such as uh, staff group, job role, area of work, uh, pay band. And this enables very specific workforce questions and scenarios to be explored uh, with the data there to back up the findings. 
Um, the charts and metrics can then be downloaded in a variety of formats. Um, so you can print them out or include them in reports. And FIWIS metrics and charts have uh, recently been used in um, in a midwifery learning disabilities and an integrated neighbourhood uh, planning project within Greater Manchester. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? Thanks. Um, right, unfortunately, as Claire said, we can't show a live demo of uh, VWIS, and this is because of the stringent IG agreements in place uh, with organisations and localities. But here are some uh, of the sample charts and metrics illustrating the VWIS system. Um, but if your organisation is already onboarded, then contact us and we can arrange a demo. Or if you're not sure, then contact us and we can clarify whether you're onboarded or not. Um, so the views included those focused on cross sector workforce composition and characteristics and also absence and turnover. Um, so there's views within the views, there's maps, charts and metrics to illustrate the underlying data. So here we've got a staffing post view. Uh, with customizable filters and a dynamic retirement forecaster showing the percentage of staff hitting a user defined age in a number of years. So, like the filters can be applied to this uh, forecasting tool to look at specific staff groups, etc. Um, and then we've got workforce characteristics charts showing age, gender, pay split, nationality, and ethnicity profiles. For, again, for the chosen workforce. And then down below, I've got a locality scorecard, which sort of uh, summarizes the key metrics for a locality and also a data quality view. Thanks, Claire. Thanks, Helen. So the future of VWIS. So the last three years, work has been focused on health and social care lco organizational data so our trust and local authorities are being encouraged to onboard with our program within primary care we've done a general practice so our gp workforce data is now um, live and available within the viewer system and in the future we're looking at how we can expand our data sets across the health and social care landscape so in to include or workforce, not just LCO information, social care, tertiary specialist care providers, an expansion across primary care into other areas as well. And our program is going to focus on locality and GM data intelligence to support workforce planning at place and hopefully to provide a really comprehensive view of workforce across Greater Manchester. Now, at present, we do have a number of onboarded organisations currently using VWIS across Greater Manchester. But if you'd like to know more about the virtual workforce information system, please contact a member of our team as Alan, as Alan has, um, has reached out. Um, in terms of training materials that are available, we've got a full suite of training materials, including the Tableau Guide, communication documents that talk to organisations about our work. The frequently asked questions that we often get from organisations in terms of onboarding all the way through to using the system. Um, our short demo videos will be available a little bit later on this year. And we're also going to be reaching out to see if we can get some digital ambassadors to come and join us. So if you'd like to become a digital workforce ambassador for your area, then we'd really love to talk to you. And we're going to be sending some comms out in the next couple of months in relation to that particular role. Now, um, I am conscious that it's a bit of a whistle stop tour due to the impromptu <laughs> challenges with teams, but we're going to put, I'm going to go over to the chat box now. So following this session, are there any more areas you would like to see any information on? Do you have any questions that are specific to O1 or VWAVES? Um, would you be interested in receiving a copy of our case studies that are due to go out a little bit later this year? Well, come off screen now. Hopefully I can do this. <laughs> OK, any questions? Claire, it's Lindsay from Skills for Care. I've, I've put a quick question in, in the chat and to say it might warrant a conversation because we obviously as Skills for Care collect all of the adult social care workforce data 
for both local authority and the independent sector. So we may be able to have a conversation to assist. Wonderful. A bit that, further. Would be, that would be fantastic. Thank you, Lindsay. Yeah, we'll definitely take you up on that offer. And interestingly, we use the Tableau format for our data. So I've put a link in, in the chat so you can oh, have fantastic. a look at that broken down to your ICS level as well. Thank you, Lindsay. Any other questions? Oh, Sue, I can see you put your hand up there. I was just going to uh, pick your brains really about what you see um, for the future of, of uh, VWIS in particular, I guess. Um, where do you see it going? How do you see it supporting the system longer term? Yeah, so it's, it's a really good question. So um, we know there are lots of um, digital platforms that offer intelligence in relation to national statistics and um, all areas um, patient facing all the way through to um, demographics. It's, it's a huge, digital is huge. I think where we're making probably the biggest difference is for organisations that are really challenged from a resource and capacity perspective, we're taking a lot of the hard work out of the intelligence production for them. So certain um, organisations um, do it really, really well and others don't. So we're creating a baseline of intelligence for Greater Manchester specifically. And I think um, I think for us, as we learn, as we're learning through the process, um, it's really about how we can get the best user experience as well. So the future for us in terms of VWIS is um, incorporation of greater data sets so that we can provide more meaningful data analytics. And I think having those conversations to see where we can do some deep dives in areas of workforce that we can look at the forecasting. So Alan's already referenced, we're looking at um, retirement forecasting models within the system. We're looking at how we can incorporate operational planning within VWIS. Um, and it's the first time it's been done across Greater Manchester at locality neighbourhood level, which is really important to note. It's not an easy task to bring data together from all of those organisations, but it's one that we're seeing some real benefit from this year. So in terms of those organisations are working together and um, looking at their intelligence together as a team and they're seeing where they've got instead of in silo, they're seeing where they've got some of the bigger challenges that they can address collectively. Danielle, I can see your hand up. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to let you know there's a couple of questions in the chat box for you as well. OK, so yeah, really, really good question. So, so what is a digital ambassador? So as we onboard with our activities within VWIS and O1, we want to encourage um, individuals from organisations that we can keep in touch with and talk to about our programmes of activity and all the offers that are available, whether it be the um, trainer trainer courses. And we do do lots of comms and um, sometimes uh, against all the priorities within Greater Manchester. We want to make sure that we've got digital ambassadors that we can reach out to. So there really would be um, digital ambassadors at organisational level, but we would really love to try and get locality ambassadors where they can reach out to the colleagues and the cohorts and forums and meetings and just say, if you, if you want to, this free resource is available, but also there's training coming up and we've got our digital work um, workforce toolkit coming up as well. So. Um, People on people on the ground in organisations just to spread the word of the work that we're doing. And I can see we've got a question, Claire. You talked about the types of roles. Do you have data on how widespread its use is? Yes, we do. So um, in terms of VWIS, this is probably one for Alan Slack, um, our senior analyst. At the moment, I think we've got something like yeah. one point. Yeah, are you happy to answer that one, Alan? Yeah, so uh, at the moment we've got almost all trust signed up um and most of the councils got a couple of councils still not signed up due to resource capacity issues um frequency of visits yeah I'm, i'll have to have a look on tableau itself for that um got about 100 users so far um yeah it's growing, isn't but, it? And I think yeah. just in terms of the um, frequency of visits, once an organisation's onboarded, we work through them with a number of activities. So we talk through the data on a regular basis with organisations um, at their at their um, at their timings because obviously we're really really busy. 
um, just to walk through high level analytics with them as well. So we've had some really interesting conversations. The system's very black and white. Data tends to be that way. Um, individuals can have an understanding of their organisational data and then they see it in black and white. So we've had some really great conversations driven around um, percentage of sickness, sickness reasons, where they've gone back into their organisations and held more strategic conversations about the data that's been found. We've also been working through data quality challenges as well, because we know that the data that's provided sometimes have, has data quality challenges with it. So it's a great tool to be able to start that discussion of, is my data right? Is it right? Can we go back? And we've been, been doing push throughs of data specifically, especially with our GP and um, data digital data, that's one that we've spent a little bit of time kind of really making sure it's as accurate as it could possibly be. Any other questions? Well, if anybody wants to know anything more about either of the programmes, the OWAM or the, um, the VWIS programme, please do reach out. We're hoping to do um, several more presentations over the up and coming quarters, just so that we can keep you involved in relation to the activities that are taking place. So um, if you're an onboarded organisation and you want to know more, please contact us and we can run through your analytics with you. If you're not onboarded and you want to know why, <laughs> we can hold those conversations to see how we can onboard you into the near future. Um, and as we as we host sessions that are free resources for organisations across Greater Manchester, we can obviously get in contact with you and we can talk through how we can support with any specific areas of workforce. Right, Johnny, I, th I think we've, we've recovered. We've got three minutes left. <laughs> we did. Thank you, Claire. And thank you for managing the IT glitches so uh, professionally. And thank you, Sophie, for providing the uh, entertainment whilst Claire was gone. So I guess all that's left to find out is what you had for lunch, Claire. <laughs> I don't think I've had you any yet. The cold. <laughs> <laughs> you know I haven't either. <laughs> so it seems that bananas on toast is a popular <laughs> Fair enough. Popular option. <laughs> you can draw so thank you so much, everybody. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone, for your time today. We'll be Thank sending you. a copy of the presentation out. Thanks now. Thanks, Thanks Claire. Bye. Bye.